What's up everybody? It is so good to finally see you again and today I am happy to share with you 10 of the most incredible floral perfumes in existence. Guys and girls, these are the best money can buy. Whatever you pick, whatever you choose to wear, you are gonna smell incredible and people will ask questions. This is quite simply the best money can buy. And let me tell you, I am not gonna include rose-based scents simply because I have a video that focuses specifically on that incredible aroma that is emanated by the queen of all flowers. You can check it from this link up here. Now, I'm gonna be focusing on white flowers, yellow flowers, some purple flowers such as violet and iris, and let us start, guys, because there's a lot to talk about. Really excited about this video. Now, number one, this one features one of the most realistic gardenia accords ever made. I have a gardenia plant in my terrace and I can assure you that this, along with another one that I will talk about later, are the best. This is Velvet Gardenia by Tom Ford. This one mixes a perfectly well-judged note of gardenia with an earthy mushroom note. And let me tell you guys, the result is astonishing. It has a slightly honeyed vibe to it. Whenever you wear this, you just feel complete. You feel as if you smelled clean, like a, a beautiful, complex flower that is emanating all sorts of aromas. It has a base of French labdanum and incense, which make things a lot more interesting than they should be concerning a floral perfume. This is just as good as a gardenia perfume can get. Yeah, guys, this is just a, a, a slightly sweet, dewy, French morning on the countryside. I'm transported in a garden made of beautiful white flowers. And the earthiness of the mushroom is present, even though it might not be in the official notes. I can assure you, I smell the earthiness, the earthiness of a lovely earthy mushroom. Fantastic stuff. Velvet Gardenia, guys, give it a try. Now, we're gonna stay on this theme and I'm gonna introduce to you probably the most affordable of all the perfumes we're gonna be talking about today. And this is Tuberose Gardenia by Estée Lauder. This is quite simply a marvel of perfumery. It is more about the gardenia than the tuberose. It has all sorts of white flowers. There's neroli, osmanthus, you got jasmine, uh, of course, tuberose, and that gardenia. Uh, this just smells indolic. This smells like the plant. This, I kid you not, is me sniffing my gardenia plant. This is hands down the best hologram of a gardenia. It does not get more white than this thing. It has not, it doesn't have the same persistence as Velvet Gardenia, but most floral perfumes are kind of transparent. They're, they, they fluctuate a lot, their presence, and then all of a sudden they disappear. The best would be to wear it on tissue. But let me tell you guys, you wanna smell perfectly clean and you wanna smell sweet and delicious. This is it, Tuberose Gardenia and don't be put off by the woman-y vibe that this is emanating. Also, as a man, I wear it, no problem. You just have to have some confidence. And guys, girls, whatever your gender is, perfumes don't really have a gender. You can wear whatever you wish. This is a fantastic perfume for spring and summer. Amazing stuff. Tuberose Gardenia from the Private Collection. Oh, J'adore. Splendid stuff, guys. Splendid. Now, we are going to proceed with something that I haven't talked about in a while. This is Amber Cologne by Bortnikov. This is a juicy, magnificent frangipani mixed with some jasmine. And of course, there's that natural 
ambergris that gives it some saltiness but the main accord that i get from this is a lovely citrusy floral incredible aroma that is just to die for the most affordable from bornikov's collection and also probably in the top three mm -hmm. best sellers the best smelling one this is just insanity and a bottle it, it's juicy it's like a tropical garden hitting you in the face this opening is in the top 10 best openings in perfumery period. It's just impossible to beat. Man, Dimitri, you hit the nail hard with this one. I picture something golden, like uh, uh, something fiery, juicy, rich, watery, tropical. It's sweet it has the right balance between spicy and sweet and animalic there's the exactly the perfect amount of musk the perfect amount of ambergris it'll evolve a lot so this one starts off very floral and becomes a bit more animalic deep down in the dry down and it's just a trip and i love it fantastic stuff Try it out, Amber Cologne, get a sample, do yourself a favor, you're gonna smell so unique and so incredibly good. Next up, we can pick anyone and this is just gonna be a home run. This is Impression de Giverny by Forte Manley, one of my top 10 favorite brands of all time. And this is pretty much the perfect floral perfume. It mixes a lot of floral notes there's even a note of tulip in this there's some mango you got jasmine of course there's some rose there's just so many things going on the first time i smelled this i almost fainted and this is so ethereal oh man this opening another top 10 opening it smells natural of course, there might be some synthetic use in this perfume, just like in anything that is out in the market nowadays. But let me tell you guys, this is just a sweet, narcotic, not endolic, just perfectly balanced, slightly greenish accord of flowers that is to die for. It will last tops maybe an hour and a half on your skin too if you're lucky so i suggest you apply it on your clothes this is just so good guys man rasse for to the perfumer behind this is just somewhat of a marvel he manages to create so many good perfumes so many of them are insane. I own four and I'm planning to buy a few more. Let me tell you guys, this is just a step above anything else. This is what niche is all about to me. Fantastically done. It just smells proper. An incredible floral for the ages. Now, what could we pick next? Now, this one is different. This one is something that you've never smelled before and probably the least floral from the list. It is an accord of tuberose and angelica, but the tuberose in this one is not the same tuberose that you would find in the masterpiece perfume Fraca, which I will not mention in this video, but you all know that it's in my top favorite floral perfumes, if you've been following me. And this is Nuit de Bacchilit. This one actually was a finalist, if not a winner, of the golden pair i think it actually won the art and olfaction award it's something that has never been done before Mon Dieu. what is this thing this is so different this is so green it basically uses an accord that recreates the stem of the tuberose flower so this is not the uh, creamy, sweet, delicate, feminine perfume that you would expect a tuberose scent to smell like. This is just 
green in your face fantastic beautifully constructed just a masterpiece in its own right <sighs> oh, man anybody who smells this on you would be wondering what the hell it is there is no question you are bound to get reactions from this perfume it emanates a very strong aroma so you will be noticed it emanates a DNA that hasn't been done before. It is just fantastic. A green tuberose. Who would have thought that could even exist? I mean, creating a perfume that is based on the stem of a flower is just genius. Has been done in Nuit de Bacchilit. Next up. And this is one of my most favorite perfumes of all time. Not just floral perfumes, I'm talking about just the best. This is the best money can buy. It's from a brand that I adore. This is Jardin Nocturne by Chalini. A treasure to behold. This is like the most precious juice that I own. This is flacon. It's so simple, yet so delicate and so perfect. And let me tell you guys, this is just the perfect jasmine and oud scent with just the right amount of skank just the right amount of feral notes it has a bit of a saffron like aroma and the jasmine in this precious little um, um, glass bottle is of top notch quality created by Maurice Roussel a god in perfumery by his own rights. This is just for all the fanatics out there, for all those aficionados that cannot live without perfumes, just like me. This is as good as it gets. You will not find anything else out there that is like Jardin Nocturne. A perfect representation of a Dubai garden at night. Oh man, I'm telling you. The more you smell this, the more you will be addicted to it. And you're just gonna wanna spread some love over on your hand, neck, whatever part of your body. It's an extrait de parfum. Hence the reason why I decided to go with a dab on flacon because you don't need much. Oh, man, this aroma is just so addictive. It's like a drug, man. Perfection in a bottle, Jardin d'Amalfi, Jardin Nocturne, I beg your pardon, I'm just getting overexcited. Now, next up, we have a perfume that I'm planning to buy, this is just a sample, and this is pretty much the aroma that I believe an angel would emanate. This is Diamond Jubilee Bouquet by Grossmith, a perfume brand that is very underrated has been in the game for over a hundred years. They had kind of a resurrection lately and uh, let me tell you guys, every single thing that I smelled from this line is of insanely high quality and this one is no exception. And I thought I didn't like Violet. I thought I was not a big fan of Iris. This one changed everything. Now next up, we're gonna talk about Fleur de la Lita. Now this marvel represents everything that I love about perfumery. It is sweet, green, slightly animalic, musky. It has it all. It has an incredible accord made up of uh, magnolia, galbanum, jasmine, and lily of the valley, I believe, and a fantastic, musky note given by the umbrette seeds which are very expensive unfortunately very coveted and they are the perfect replacement for the deer musk if you are vegan if you don't want to buy perfumes such as amber cologne or anything from bortnikov and arrache le doré you prefer to stay vegan you go for ducita she uses 
the musk mallow, also known as umbred seeds, that gives it a very animalic and feral aroma, yet makes things quite bearable. It's just so beautiful, guys, and it mixes perfectly with the floral accord given by the mix of sweet flowers in Fleur de Lelita. This is just, man. I remember going a few sprays in the morning about two weeks ago and just embracing my daughter before leaving her at school. And she's, she just looked at me and went, ah. and she, I could see the love in her eyes just inhaling this magical elixir. It was the moment that I've been looking for for a while. It was just so lovely. That little tiny four-year-old daughter of mine just loved this thing. And I can tell you, you will as well, if you are into particularly different floral scents. This is not the sweet uh, little playful thing. This is the one for the grown-ups. Fleur de la Lita is just... C'est Fleur de la Lita, quoi. C'est magnifique. Fantastic. Now, talking about fantastic, I have a perfume that is also very different from anything else that you've smelled before. A very limited one. This is Grand Enya, a lovely, animalic, oody, deliciously well created perfume that reminds me of the golden age of perfumery. Age Le Doré just created a masterpiece with this one. I'm not even going to spray it because this is just too precious. I'm just smelling so many things right now but let me tell you this uses a vintage accord of gardenia that is unlike anything i've ever smelled before it's very complex this one is something that i want to have in my collection for the rest of my life i only use very specific uh, and tiny amounts at night before going to sleep when i just want to please myself with a different aroma something that is incredibly tenacious, something that I will still smell the morning after I sprayed it because it is an extra de parfum after all. And Arage Le Doré uses high quality ingredients, vintage ingredients. The bottle is a masterpiece within itself. This is just as good as perfumery gets, guys. Very limited stuff, so do not blind buy it. Just buy it if you know that you want to have something special in your collection. Grand Denia. Extrait de parfum by Arège Le Doré, one of the gods of perfumery nowadays. Now, I want you to take a close look at this juice. This is as purple as it gets. And no, this is no violet and this is no iris. This is actually the most indolic jasmine based scent of all times. This is Saracen by Serge Luton, a masterpiece of perfumery. If you don't like Andalic, forget about this. This is as poopy as things can get. The beginning is very harsh, very strong and very addictive. It's just so sensual and sexual. It'll draw people in. It'll emanate an aroma of explosiveness that will just capture everybody's attention. Let me tell you guys, this is not a juice that anybody can pull off. This is something that is so special and I'm also planning on getting those tiny little bell bottles once this is finished because it's just so captivating. The current formulation is just as good as it used to be. Unlike many other Serge Luton who lost their mojo, unfortunately. I don't know what happened with Serge, but they are shooting too high right now. I see prices going for the stars. Some bottles are worth... <sighs> more than 600 euros on the website and honestly they used to be maybe 200 250 back in the 90s back in the early 2000s so i don't know what happened but this let me tell you guys is an amazing jasmine based scent slightly honeyed slightly sweet but also quite feral there is this there's just mm, man might stain your shirt, so whenever you spray this, spray from afar, never too close. The way should be done. 
What's next? Lost in flowers from Strange Love Perfumery. This is like putting your head inside a florist shop. You got tuberose, gardenia, jasmine, lily of the valley. There's some oud, there's some tagette. There's just everything, a single flower that you can think of. It, it, it's in here, guys, it's in here. And the oud just makes things very, very particular. It's not a perfume for everybody. This one, you either love it or hate it. I just love it. I think it's one of the best floral scents ever created. Oh man, this is just so good. <laughs> it's a bit sharp at the beginning. And it will stay sharp actually. It's it doesn't it never becomes too creamy, too buttery. It's not one of those perfumes that uh I don't know dolls would wear, you know, <laughs> long eyelashes and big makeup. This is just a lady wearing a straight jacket, going to the office and being the boss. It's just man. <sighs> You have to be confident to pull this one off. Fantastic stuff. So I'm kind of cheating because I have a 12th perfume that I want to talk about, but it's just very hard for me to pick 10 now. That being said, this is a sample. I have a bottle, it's in Paris because these guys, they wouldn't ship to Italy. So I had a bottle sent to my aunt and I'm waiting for her to be back here in Rome. I'm talking about Masterpiece Miyako. This is one of the best perfumes ever made, guys. From the house of Euphorie. The perfect Osmanthus scent. Winner of the Art and Olfaction Award, rated five stars by Luca Turin, praised by the community in a way that I cannot even explain. It has the same formula since it was created, has not been reformulated. And these guys uh, at Euphorie, they are known to keep things just as good as they can. And if they don't have the ability to replicate the same scent over and over, they will vault it and that's it, adios. Man, all I, I didn't even need to put some of this perfume. I just have it in my hands and I know it will stick around. This is a sweet, honeyed apricot perfume that is unlike anything else. This is just so bright and so luminous. It's like smelling a fresh ripe apricot that is mixed with some honey and there is an earthiness given by I I can't even imagine what kind of an incense Olibanum vibe. Almost smells like a banana. I don't even know how that's possible. How can a perfume smell like a banana? This just, it beats me. And uh, there's also a, an oak vibe. It's so complex. And the, the sheer amount of talent that was put into this scent will show nothing previously that was done in perfumery comes close to this. Actually, the one perfume that I could think of is Nombre Noir by Shiseido, which uh, basically is an extent perfume. It doesn't exist anymore. There are some bottles here and there, and if you had the luck to smell it, you would kind of feel what I'm talking about. Man, this is one of a kind. Try it out. Something that I cannot wait to be putting in my top shelf. Miyaku by Ofuri. Guys, I hope you enjoyed. And I hope these times are treating you well. I was glad to be able to put up this list for you. And if you have any comments, please feel free to share. I'm really curious to know what's your favorite florals and if you enjoyed the ones that I've been talking about. So I'll see you again soon. Take it easy, everybody. Cheerio.